Hi, I'm Tasman Ropley, cosmetic chemist and trainer here at the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make a UV damage repair cream for the body. Now let me show you how to put it together. Okay, so to start, I have my water phase here and to this, I'm gonna add a bit of glycerin. This is a humectant, which is gonna help keep moisture and hydration in the skin and also protect it from trans epidermal water loss. Just gonna give that one a stir until it's homogenous. Okay, so to start the structure of building my cream, I am going to be using some Carbapool Ultras 10 by Lubrizol. This is a grade of Carbama. Now, this will take some time to dissolve. It's not going to dissolve straight away. So what we want to do essentially here is just wet the polymer, make sure it's nice and wet and dispersed. And we just continue to stir until it dissolves. Now you can use an overhead mixer here, um, something that's low shear and do continuous mixing until it's fully dissolved. Okay, and then we're just gonna pop our water face on heat here. Now while that's heating, I'm gonna to put together my oil face here. So in my bowl, I have some uh, Eco Hance Care PS3 by Evonik. This is a nice natural derived uh, oil and water emulsifier. To this, I'm gonna be adding some glycerol stearate citrate. This is an anionic emulsifier. This is gonna add extra stability and structure to my cream. Now, lipids. I have a small input of a plant oil here. I'm using some Satcha Inchi oil. I'm also using some Dermaphil Sensolve. This is a nice light feeling and long spreading ester. You do want to use um, a, a decent amount of a long spreading ester because it is a body product. So there's um, a larger volume of skin to cover. And I just got in some pipettes here, some Crotamol GTCC, which is capillic capric triglycerides from Crota. And we're just going to pop that one in heat also. Okay, so once your uh, oil phase is all homogenous, we're gonna add that to our water phase. And we're just gonna give that one a stir until homogenous. Okay, so we're just gonna continue stirring this while it cools. Now, notice how it's quite liquid-like and there's no viscosity yet. It's because I haven't neutralized my carbamer. So I'm gonna neutralize my carbamer last and give it a little bit more time to dissolve. And then once we neutralize it, that's gonna really start building the viscosity and also the structure of my emulsion. And also carbamer, it has a high viscosity impact. So if your cream is too viscous for your liking, you can also reduce the import of your carbamer as well as your emulsifiers as well. Okay, so while that's cooling, I'm just gonna talk you through a couple of the actives I am gonna be using in my cream. Now, the first one here is the Zeoderm X by Organic Bioactives, this one here. Now, this is a premium botanical extract, which is also certified organic and also comes from the heart of New Zealand. Now, it uses green biotechnology and it has been innovated to purposely address the environmental pollution, UV and blue light damage, and also well suited for both skin and hair care products. So it's got proven benefits for environmental pollution, UV and blue light, and also premature aging. So just pulling up some of the efficacy data here on the screen. So you can see it's got some really good antioxidant activity here. Now the second active I'm gonna be using is the Calinat DNA. So this is made from pure uh, sodium DNA um, and double helix polymeric structure. So what it does is it provides the skin um, an instant lifting effect and long-term anti-wrinkle elasticity enhancing features. And it also has proven activity in anti-pollution, soothing and UV damage repair actions. So just pulling up the efficacy data here, we've got some anti-wrinkle action. 
So it says here that the Calinat decreases wrinkle depth by 135% when com compared to the placebo treatment just after eight weeks, along with some immediate perceived lifting action. You can also see here in this second table, it's got some elasticity enhancement. Um, so it increases the skin elasticity by 26% after eight weeks on 20 volunteers. The third graph shows the skin thickness increasing and also the replumping of the skin. So overall 10% with increased values, three folds higher than placebo. So it's very ideal for dry um, and mature skin. And it also has in the last graph here, um, the fibroblast proliferation. Um, so it increases in short, so after 24 hours and long term, the fibroblast uh, proliferation. So the same pattern was observed with stem cells as well. So a couple of really good actives there to use in our UV damage repair cream. They're both tackling a couple of different things, which is really good. Now I'm just going to go in here with some tocopherol. This is a antioxidant to protect my formula from oxidation, but it's actually a really good one for the skin as well. So it protects the skin from oxidation, which can be caused from environmental factors. So it actually damages the cells of the DNA. So kind of a good one to use there. I'm using um, a glycerin based aloe vera extract here as well. This has got some soothing, some moisturizing and calming benefits. I've got my preservative here. Just Yuxal PE 9010 by Shulk. And I'm just going in here with an essential oil blend from just off the shelf that we have here. You can, of course, pick your own. I'm just going to give that one a mix here. You can see now it's looking a lot more milky and creamy like, but still not much viscosity. It's a little bit more than before, but not as much. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to neutralize my carbon mask. So you will see upon adding my neutralizer, it is going to thicken up quite a bit and look more like a nice viscous cream. So I'm going in here with my tremethamine solution. Now you do need to be careful with the amount of neutralizer you are using with a carbon mask uh, because too much can cause it to irreversibly thin and also um, adjusting final pH after you've already neutralized it can also um, cause it to irreversibly thin, which is not what we want. So you can see here that's starting to thicken up quite a bit, which is what we want. So now I'm looking like a nice, beautiful viscous cream. And we will assess the final viscosity the next day as well. We will allow it to sit overnight, obviously, to check for any signs of instability. Now, I am just going to check um, our final pH. Remember, we're not going to adjust it. We're just going to check it and see if it's sitting at about around 6 to 6.5. And that's about 6.3. So that's pretty much where we want it to be. And as always, we're just going to cover and leave this sit overnight and we'll come assess it the next day. Okay, and here is what my UV cream is looking like the next day. As you can see, that's thickened up heaps. It's looking nice, beautiful emulsion. Beautiful and thick, nice and stable. It's got really good spread. It's really nice and soft and has a really nice like buttery emollient feeling. Another really important formulating concept when making something for UV damaged skin is to remember that the sun or any other environmental stresses can significantly dry out your skin. There is a saying here in Australia, I'm not sure if anyone else has heard of it, but when someone has really bad uh, sun damaged skin, it goes really wrinkly and dry and we refer it to crocodile skin because it literally looks like crocodile skin. So you want to make sure that it's got some good moisturizing or some hydrating benefits to it, something soothing, and then also your UV damage repairing actives as well. 
Well, there you go. That's how easy it is to put together a UV damage repair cream for the body. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to receive notification on the rest of our videos. Happy formulating.